everybody. Welcome back to the PD Preps podcast. It is Tuesday, December 5th around noon. Uh, good pod for you coming this week. Football season is still going <clears throat> here in Sonoma County. Uh, we had Sam Vincent playing for a state title game. We're going to talk about the exciting region, North Cal regional game uh, last weekend. Uh, preview the state title game coming up this weekend down in Southern California. Uh, and then I'm um, talking a little, a little hoops at the end here. Um, Gus Morris, Keenan O'Doherty, Jordan Lattimore, usual crews all here today. Um, <clears throat> Keenan, I did it again. I said I wouldn't do it, and I did it again. I, I doubted the St. Vincent Mustangs, and they uh, threw it right back I mean, in my face again. I thought I had learned my lesson. Apparently, I haven't. So he, that's well, on me. He, Hand up. Prove me wrong. Again, I will never do that ever again. Well, that's what you said. Yeah, you said you'll never do it again, but that's what you said last time you picked against them, against you, Kai. This time I swear. This time I promise. Never going to doubt this time. Never this again. time caught, the last caught time. in the act. Caught in the act. See, I mean, J- Jordan's only been on the job for what? Maybe like a month, and he's already making smarter picks than you, man. Come on now. Come on, man. Let's go. <laughs> you know what? I mean, again, last time that I last time I doubt last time I doubt St. Vincent. Um, all credit to the Mustangs, man. Um, I mean, again, this uh, this this you know the magical season kind of rolls on. Um, let's just dive right, you know dive right into it. Um, twenty eight twenty six winners over Palo Alto. Um, third time to charm for St. Vincent. Two years ago, you know they made it to the NorCal championship game. Same you know same place. Lost in that game. A heartbreaker uh, uh, against Argonaut, I think it was. Yep. Your last, you know the. Following year, you know, following that heartbreaker to Clear Lake in the NCS title game, and now they finally get over the hump. Um, 28-26, Palo Alto, David versus Goliath. David wins again. Um, school of 200 beats a school of 2,000. Um, really exciting game. Came down to, I mean, again, maybe as dramatic of an ending as you can get. And also, too, this this kind of kind of flashes back a bit to the to that Clear Lake game last year where, you know, oh, Clear Lake gosh. won. Clear Lake won on a, on a two-point conversion with, like, seconds left. And Palo Alto nearly did the same thing to send the game to overtime. Final drive, what you know, what was it? Two minutes left. Palo Alto goes down, scores, and then they have a two-point conversion. Anyway, Keenan, I'm I'm getting ahead of myself. You were there. Take us through the scenes. Amazing game. But yeah, tell us what happened. Yeah, I don't know what it is with me covering St. Vincent football and and championship games because they always come down to like the final play or at least the last <laughs> last two last two two games have obviously i was at that clear lake game last year um yeah you mentioned you mentioned gus uh, before i get into the game obviously you mentioned the third time's the charm thing I, and I, I was talking with uh trent herzog after the game you know this is like this is the culmination of like a a, a three-year stretch for st vincent where they have yeah. just been the cream of the crop you, you know and keep in mind them making the north Tal- Nor- uh, norcal title game two years ago and then the ncs title game uh, last year was in a division lower in division seven now they make it in up in division six, a division higher, win the whole thing, win NCS, and now we're going to the state state title game in division six, uh, division six double A, uh, r- rather. Um, but yeah, I mean, this was this was absolutely crazy. I mean, this had all the emotions, you know. St. Vincent got a FaceTime call from Meek Mill before right before they were about to walk yeah, out. Give yeah, I, I know, giving giving them some motivation and they were fired up after that. Um, I mean, Gus, I, I know you're in Petaluma as well. Unexpected rain pretty much the entire night. I, I know mm-hmm. no one thought it was going to rain. You know, even the radar said it wasn't raining, but it, it was damn raining. Um, so, uh, I mean, this was at Casa's, Casa's home field, a place where Trent Herzog, the head coach of the Mustangs, spent yeah. 26 years of his, of his life pretty much. Uh, in Petaluma, you know, big, big thing for Petaluma. So this game had all the emotions going into it, first of all. Also, you know, mentioning uh, to your point, the 200 versus the 160, actually, not 200, mm-hmm. 160 versus 2000, you know, David versus Goliath matchup. So um, everything was coming into this game. I mean, St. Vincent was just fired up. I mean, it didn't didn't really matter who they were playing. They were just ready to go. And obviously, you know, we pre- previewing game, uh, previewing this game last week. So much focus was on. The Pally offensive line, you know, their quarterback, you know, their two star wide receiver outs, the two two star wide receivers, excuse me. Um, their quarterback, starting quarterback, uh, Declan Packer, I believe, did not play in this game. He was not even huh. suited up. He was in street clothes. He suffered oh, wow. a concussion in the NCS championship game and was in protocol. Um, so 
they started a freshman named Justin Fung, who apparently has been not recruited, but like apparently all these big schools down south have been going after him since he was like in sixth grade, from what I heard. Mm. Um, so he he started. Also, they were they were without their leading tackler um, a, as well, who I believe injured his knee uh, in the in the NC or it's not the NCF the CCS title game uh, number twenty two. Joseph Kessler. He was out as well. He was their linebacker, fullback, kind wow. of do it all, leading tackler. So he was out so, as well. So, so, they were... so quick thing, I'm gonna cut you off. I would have loved to have known this before I had picked Palo Alto last week. Just saying, <laughs> if well, I had known any of that. <laughs> well, so here's the thing: no one knew about the uh, about the quarterback until he stepped on the field for warmups. Mm, okay. not, not a single peep. And uh, and saying that they kept the Kessler thing pretty pretty under wraps as well. Um, I didn't find out about it. I don't think until like Wednesday or Thursday. So, well, well, this was well after your pick, Gus. Don't worry about it. Um, <laughs> anyways, let's get into the game. So, like I said, St. Vincent, no fear at all, whatever. Came out, boom, hit him in the mouth. Quick 14, 14 nothing lead, uh, which included St. Vincent's defense stopping Pally on a three and out on their first drive. So, boom. 14 nothing lead right off the right off the jump. Catarelli and Casanovas, you know, they're two st- their sophomore dynamic pair of sophomores uh, in the backfield were were going nuts right after, right off the bat. Catarelli scampered up the touch, scampered up the right sideline for a 15 yard touchdown. Casanovas uh, rumbled for a 10 10 yard TD and got a little help from his offensive line to to get over the get over the uh, the, the goal line there. So quick 14 nothing lead and all of a sudden you know automatically has Palo Alto on the back foot. Palo Alto kind of settles down, you know, freshman quarterback getting his pretty much his first start and probably biggest start of his career already, you know, in the NorCal championship game, settles down a little bit, scores on the next two drive, next two drives. But uh, the second PAT on the, the, the second point after attempt was blocked, which is absolutely crucial in this game as, as, as we go down, especially you know, to the ending Gus mentioned, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, Costly offensive pass interference sees St. Vincent go three and out on the next drive. You know, possible momentum ship for, Pali, for Palo Alto. You know, Palo Alto's down just 14-13. They get a huge stop uh, for St. Vincent into a three and out. Possible momentum shift. St. Vincent needs something. They need something on defense to really, to really get back, you know, get the momentum back. Boom, they get it via Jack Oliphant. Big man interception, I like to call it, right right on the line of scrimmage in the red zone uh, of St. Vincent, by the way. So Pally had driven all the way down to the St. Vincent red zone at this point. And uh, Jack Oliphant using every every inch of those long arms, getting up there uh, and, and getting the interception. So, boom, momentum right back in St. Vincent's favor. They keep it going. Offense rolls all the way down the field. Jack Davis uh, uh, rushes for a four-yard TD. So... You know, all of a sudden, 21-13, St. Vincent possibly gets the momentum back. You know, this is this is right before right before halftime, kind of. Uh, Palo Alto comes right back, absolutely fools everyone in the stadium with one of those double reverse flea flicker plays that catches St. Vincent completely sleeping. So that they get another touchdown, 21-20 going into halftime. Palo Alto, you're in a perfect position because the Vikings get the ball after the half. So Kind of wondering what what that what that Mustang locker room is in the begin at, at halftime. You know, knowing Palo Alto gets the ball back, knowing they just scored, they're not down by one half. Defense has to get come up with something, a huge stop, huge three and out, whatever. And they get it right after, force an immediate three and out. Um, you know, and and that kind of goes back and forth throughout the throughout the rest of the third quarter until with about just under two minutes left in the third quarter. St. Vincent breaks uh, breaks through. Finally, gets a uh, gets the another touchdown via Casanova's legs. And I'll tell you, Gabe Casanova's man, he did. I mean, he he was just an absolute workhorse at the quarterback position, and and he was gassed and rightly so a- after the game. Guy is um, going to be a problem next couple of years. Yeah. Only a sophomore, and he's already yes. been like a stud for this team. So yeah, yes, absolutely, absolutely. Um, so twenty eight twenty going into the fourth quarter. More three and outs happen. More three and outs happen. It's a defensive clinic by both the Mustangs and I guess the Vikings as well. Um, in, in terms of holding, not, not really giving anything to the other team. 
But Gus, um, as you know very well, and Jordan, you'll you'll soon find out as as you continue on this on this on this job, is uh, there's always going to be late some late drama ever present in high school football, and this is where it comes in. St. Vincent punts the ball back with three minutes and five seconds remaining. You know, mm. which a lot of time. <laughs> A lot of time, especially especially with uh, I believe it was two or three timeouts left for for Palo Alto as well. So three oh five remaining. Palo Alto drives and uh, Fung just places an amazing ball on the back shoulder, heading into the falling into the end zone for star wide out Jason Ozen, who has over a thousand receiving yards on the year. I mean, there was there was no defense that on that pass that St. Vincent could have played that, that, that would have stopped that pass. I, I don't think it was probably hmm. one of the more beautiful catches I've seen all year. Um, so that gets them to 28, 26 biggest two point try of both teams seasons coming up right now. Yeah. Right. Vikings convert on, uh, on the two point try Fung fakes the, fakes the handoff and goes over to his, I believe his brother, Jeremiah Fung, who's another star receiver for the Vikings, finds him over the middle in the end zone. Boom. Tie ball game. Or so everyone thought until the smoke clears up, smoke clears and there's a yellow flag lined up in the backfield. Mm. Illegal shift, five yard penalty called on the offense. So say, so Palo Alto will get another shot at the, to tie the game, but they are pushed back five yards. St. Vincent gets another try to stop him. Justin Fung uh, takes the snap, rolls right. Defensive line of St. Vincent is bearing down on him. He's running out of real estate, heading towards the sideline, decides to throw it into the right right corner of the end zone where a plethora of players are, both Mustangs and Vikings. And who ends up with the ball? None other than Joseph Edwards falling into the end zone with pretty much the game ceiling interception. Onside kick, try by uh, by Palo Alto, recovered by St. Vincent, and that Locked is all she wrote. 28-26 is the final. Uh, St. Vincent becomes the first uh, Sonoma County team since Cardinal Newman in 2019 to make the state championship game. Um, but obviously, they had to earn it, and they earn it, and they're going to Pasadena th- this upcoming week. So crazy. Crazy, crazy game. Couple, couple players I want to shout out. Really, this is, I mean, they leaned on their, on their, on their stars for this one. Casanovas, 13 rushes, 106 yards, two TDs on the ground. Catarelli, 14 rushes, 103 yards, one TD. Jack Davis, five rushes, 39 yards, one TD, three receptions, 24 yards. Nico Antonini, four receptions, 45 yards. Mustang defense comes up with nine tackles for loss. And four sacks on the evening, two of them for Rob Brooks, who had a who moved to the outside in the second half, which was crucial, by the way. Um, but yeah, I mean, St. Vincent, man, they got the job job done, man. Jordan, I said it last week, they're going to get the job done and they got it, got the job done. But yeah, I mean, I know you guys were following a little, a little bit. So just, you know, just thoughts uh, from both of you guys there. Jordan, you want to go first? I got yeah, yeah, a couple things. But. Yeah, yeah. Well, well I got to – well, I'll say first. I mean, sh- before I get to the my main spiel, I, I got to say, shout out Palo Alto. I mean, to play with a backup quarterback like that, albeit yeah. a highly touted, highly recruited, very ta- you know talented um, young quarterback. Um, still, freshman. you know, new, freshman, you know what I mean? So to be in that situation on that kind of a stage and, and put your team in that kind of position where – I mean, we got to be honest, I mean, he – they pretty much had to get a two point conversion twice to tie up this game. That's pretty much what yeah. happened when it came down to, and they just couldn't do it. So, um, you know, I don't. There's nothing to really hang your hat on or or to be sad about. I think that was a valiant effort. But Gus, come on, man. How can you, how <laughs> could you doubt this team? How could you doubt this team? Meek Mill called them 15 minutes before the game. Gus. Okay. Yes, if I had known that, if I had known that, if I had known so many pieces of information were unaware. So yes, yeah, I will, I will wear this to the end of my days. Because when you found out, when you found out, Nick Mill called them. I was in trouble. I was like, I was in trouble. I was like, this is, this is bad. This is bad. Yeah. It was, um, no, no, but, uh, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> no, I just wanted, yeah. So, um, I mean, look, this, this, this St. This Saint Vincent team is resilient. They're tough. They they know how to get it done. Um, and I and I just think, 
this is the perfect kind of momentum you want to have carrying with you into it into the next you know the final stage which is the state championship right and i think this is this is what you know no, late november early december football is all about it's pulling it out you know comes down to the last three plays just how you, how you kind of mentioned in that one stretch there keenan you know a lot of three and outs a lot of defensive football this is the kind of mm-hmm. football that it, that 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 this kind of time of the year kind of is, is percolated on right mm-hmm. so um I just, I just think, you know, this is the perfect amount of momentum they got to have for them carrying into this championship game and um, give them a whole lot of credit because they made a, a lot of plays down the stretch. So um, ne- I never had a doubt. I'll just say this. I never, I never had a doubt. They didn't ask me, but I never had a doubt. Oh, I love it. Listen, listen, no one, no one, I, listen. I'm just going to say, I'm I'm brave for going against the tide here, okay? Listen, everyone's all high and mighty. Listen, I provided some bulletin board material for St. Vincent, all right? Which which Keenan even, Keenan was even told, yeah, we saw Gus's pick. So, listen, as always, as always, when I doubt somebody, it provides some motivation, some fuel, so I will take some credit for this win. You're welcome, St. Vincent, for doubting, for doubting you guys. Uh, you need some doubters. You can't, you can't always just be high and mighty. You need something to fuel a fire. So I'm happy to provide that. I'm happy to be the foil. Resident Very press good. Democrat bad guy, Gus Morris. I will take that. I will take that title. That is me. Um, but yes, I mean, I'm I'm just going back here through St. Vincent. I mean, so again, so after that loss to Ukiah, that was, I mean, crazy to say that was a month and a half ago now. I mean, this is like, we haven't had a team playing this long. I mean, Kenan, you know, you mentioned Newman 2019. Rach Katati also uh, played for a state championship that game, or that year too, lost in it, but still. Um, I, I mean, since that, since that loss to you kind of a month and a half ago, I mean, they've won, what was that? Six in a row, seven or yeah, six in a row. And they put up, I mean, they've been killing teams. I mean, again, this, this Palo Alto game was the closest game. Yeah. They've, this Palo Alto game was the closest game they've had since, since that UK game. Um, and it is good, I think, to have these close games, especially in the playoffs when you're on late runs, teaches you how to kind of how to win these games, grit it out. Um, you don't just want to kill everybody. I mean, again, it's nice to, to win by a lot of points, but like, especially this time of year, you're not going to be doing that you know, in a state championship, you know, in a state championship game, in a NorCal regional game. Um, so really, really, you know, gritty, uh, uh, you know, just just dig deep and win or, you know, just dig deep and pull out this win here for St. Vincent. But I got to ask, though, I mean, after the game, did you ask Trent or any of the coaching staff, like if they were getting some flashbacks to Clear Lake, like kind of when, like when it was like, you know, Palo Alto was coming down here to score two point conversion to tie the game into overtime, like, because that was I, I I was getting some some reminders about that from from last year where it's like oh my god is this going to happen again? Um, yeah. But again, I think that the staff like you know I I do wonder if that was kind of on their minds of like oh my god not again. But they but hey a year later a year better and and yeah they're they're moving on here. Um, go ahead. Uh, I I think you know it's uh, that's a great point, but I do think that those are two completely different games, considering oh, that the Clear Lake 100%. was no defense at all from either yeah. team, and this was like <laughs> all defense, especially in the second half. So, um, also, I b- before you continue, I do want to clear clarify something uh, for the viewers and stuff at home. A lot of people were asking me, and I know they have asked you, Gus, of why in the heck St. Vincent was playing a D1 yeah. team with two thousand schools. Basically, it just comes down to the CIF competitive competitive equity model, which basically, you know, for these regional bowl games, um, it's 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 not what the NCS does to determine section section mm-hmm. rankings, which is basically based on enrollment and stuff like that, with sprinkled with some competitive equity. It's basically all based on on competitive equity. So the CIF, what they do is they use a an equation based on all the team's resumes to kind of put the matchups together. And to be fair, Gus, I think you made this point too when we were when we were talking off camera is that you know the the math, I mean the math was pretty accurate in in this matchup. Yeah, no. So I mean essentially what we, you know what they do, and there are some other other sections that that kind of take the same model here is they'll essentially rank like um like so the central section for or the the, the central coast section, for example, um, which is where Palo Alto is from. The way that so there's no, you know, so they have A leagues and B leagues, you know, kind of like we have the NBL Oak and the NBL Redwood, but they don't do divisions until the playoffs arrive. So yeah. what the so what the so what the section will do is they'll take all of the teams, rank them whatever one through sixty or however many teams there are, or, or how, however many divisions there are going to be, and they rank them um, 
and they split up, you know, the top eight teams into D1, you know, nine through 16, whatever, into, you know, into, into D2. And that's similar to how the, um, uh, the CIF does the state bowls as well. So the NCS, again, will, you know, there are divisions that are, you know, that are, are, are already established before, you know, at, you know, before the yeah. season started. And like you said, it's based on enrollment and then also recent success and competitive equity and things of that matter. So that's why we're having a, again, a 2000 school or 2000 person school playing a 160 person school. But I, but again, Ken, you're right. It's like, I mean, this is about as close of a game as you can get for two schools that people were like, why the heck are they playing each other? So, yeah, I mean, like, I mean, yeah, like I'd be curious to kind of see the rest of the data and see how I mean, again, I know like some of the like, I mean, I I know the kind of the kind of the big game of the weekend was um, Columbus North, which was like, a you know, like the number one team in the central section, you know, over from uh, like the Fresno area. They were playing De La Salle um, in a game where a lot of people thought I think Columbus North, Columbus North was like undefeated, had beaten some really good southern section teams. Um and they played De La Salle and De La Salle kicked their ass like 41 to zero. Like it wasn't even close. Um, so there's things like that where, you know, maybe the model doesn't always get it right. But like, I think, I think in this, I, I think in this, you know, situation, I mean, spot on. Um, so, and again, I, like we talked about this a bit too, Keenan, um, like, I think there's been this debate the last couple of years with St. Vincent, you know, where they've, you know, they're kind of on this meteoric rise. Still a small school program, you know, like, you know, D7 last year, D6 this year. I mean, you know, they beat some really good, uh, uh, you know, larger school teams this year, too. I mean, like, I think they probably would have had a pretty good chance to win NCS Division 5 this year as well. But, like, this has kind of been a fun little debate that we've had. It's like, how good is St. Vincent stacked up to kind of the big dogs around here? You know, like, Always could they is. take on Could they take on the Windsors? Could they take on the Newmans? Could they take on the Rancho Patates? You know, schools with, um, you know, the, you know, Rancho Windsor, you know, obviously a lot more kids, a lot, you know, bigger schools. Um, but yeah, I mean, I like, this is probably St. Vincent's best team ever. I mean, especially in the last three years, it's really saying something. I mean, I didn't think anyone would get any better than last year's team. I mean, with like the Kai Halls and the Jerry Sarges and like all this, I mean, all these seniors now on this team were all juniors last year. Um, and this team is just, I mean, it's, it's better. I mean, it's crazy. I mean, they're, they've gone farther, they've accomplished more. It's nuts. Um, it, so, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I think it's an interesting debate again this year. I mean, I do look back at St. Vincent's two losses this year. I mean, again, you know, they lost to Montgomery. They lost to Ukiah. Both close games, though. I think you also pointed that out. Mm-hmm. Both winnable games for sure. Um, but then again, you know, you know, you kind of look at how like how Ukiah fared against like the Windsors, you know, shut out 27-0 or, um, you know, Montgomery kind of got, you know, blown out by most of the good teams over in the Oak, too. So yeah. I don't know. I mean, I still think there is a little bit of a, of a discrepancy or, or a, a bit of a gap, I think, between St. Vincent and those top teams. But, I, but it's a really interesting plot exercise, too, because now we have seen that St. Vincent can beat these bigger teams, can beat these, yep. you know, these bigger programs. And that's huge. Um, and I think, and again, they've been doing that for the last couple of years. I will say, I mean, you know, they beat Montgomery a couple of years ago. Um, you know, they, they hang pretty well with, you know, with some of the bigger teams, bigger schools, you know, in the Redwood. So I don't know. I mean, I, I still think there's probably a bit of a gap there, but um, I mean, shoot, like Casa St. Vincent this year would have been awesome. I mean, I think that could have been an interesting yeah. game. Um, Casa Pe- or, 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 or Petaluma St. Vincent, like, um, I think St. Vincent might win that game too. I mean, like it, again, there's all these, there's all these kind of what ifs with the St. Vincent team where we're just not going to know because they're just a small team and, and or a small school and they just don't play a lot of these big teams, but man, it would be really fun to kind of see, you know, these, you know, St. Vincent play some of these, some of these big dogs around here. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. No, no, I think that's a great point. I, I also, uh, in terms of, in terms of your opening point there about the, probably the best team that this is ha- that, that St. Vincent's produced, I think the one, the key edge here that St. Vincent has over the past couple of teams is this year's seniors. They've been through it all. They were at the North Cal yeah. Bowl two years ago. They suffered the section loss last year, even though they went undefeated, they've, yeah. they've, They've suffered two losses. They've faced adversity this year. So honestly, this could be one of the most experienced group of seniors in the entire area in, 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 in terms of in terms of what what they've been through and, you know, what the program has been through. They are they have been bred for this kind of stuff. Yeah. So well, I, I think I think that's a one edge that St. Vincent has maybe on this team year's team over last year's team. Mm-hmm. Plus, I mean. I mean, you mentioned Gabe Casanovas, you know, getting to sit back as a freshman, you know, backup quarterback, you know, and yeah. kind of really learn the offense, you know, follow Jared Bosarge and and, uh, and now really take it into his own. Um, I mean, 
they're going to be, I mean, they're going to be, I mean, th- th- this isn't something that's like ending this week at the state ch- title no. game. This, this is going to be around for, for years to come. They're going to be, yeah. And, well, and then also, the, you know, of course, there's big news out of St. Vincent last week where they're also going to be going uh, to, to an independent model. They're going to be kind of breaking away from the diocese. So that'll be, and I, and I know that there was a lot of concern about, um, you know, uh, there was a lot of funding issues going on over there. Uh, there was some real concern that St. Vincent would close down this year. Um, like some really, really bad kind of budget issues going on. So, and I think with this breakaway from the diocese, there's a lot of hope and confidence now that, um, you know, there there is going to be a lot more money and a lot more stability kind of within the school. Yeah. So again, I mean, this was a school that maybe six months ago, there was a very, or, you know, maybe even less than that, there was a very good chance that it might not even make it through the school year. From what, you know, from what, you know, from I think what both of I had or from what both of us had heard, I think from people over there. Um, and yeah, and now, you know, they're, they're again, they're one, one away from the state title. Uh, the school is not going to be closing. Um, at least, you know, it, at, at least not, you know, I mean, kind of, you know, the path they're on right now, you know, they're, um, you know, things are definitely, you know, looking up for St. Vincent. And I know that a lot of the, you know, the coaches and stuff over there, especially Trent um, and that staff are very, um, you know, optimistic about kind of what the future holds. So you're right. I think yeah. this is, um, you know, this is maybe just the beginning of a dynasty here. Um, I mean, again, you know, like we'll, you know, I mean, again, you know, this is the third straight year, you know, they've, um, you know, appeared or, you know, second NCS title again in the last three years, third time appearing in an NCS title game um, that, you know, first ever NorCal, uh, you know, NorCal bowl win for them. I mean, in, in, in the three seasons before, before Trent Herzog took over, they won a total of six games. Yeah. Um, and since then, I mean, again, you know, Trent kind of took his time, you know, building the program up. You know, they were independent for a couple of years, um, you know, then and then COVID hit and then they, you know, jumped up and they joined the Redwood and just had instant success their instant success right away. Um, and now I think with this new, you, you know, with the MBL um, or with the Redwood Empire Football Conference realignment, they have a very good chance. I think they're going to be in that third group and they have a very good chance to kind of continue this, um, this reign of dominance, I think in that, yeah. you know, in that division and honestly, maybe even, you know, have a good chance to move up to that second division too. So, um, Hey, maybe the first division, you never know. So, um, anyway, it's, 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 it's been really fun. I mean, again, hater rate aside, I will, uh, I'll, I'll take <laughs> off my hater glasses for this, but, um, again, I, 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 you know, you just, you know, you have to respect and you have to like take your hat off to what St. Vincent has done the last couple of years. Um, just a really awesome, awesome story. Um, again, for a school that has less than 200 kids in it, uh, they are just punched above their weight class year in, year out. Um, and yeah, I mean, I think that uh, I, you know, I kind of wrote about this, I think in the weeks, you know, you know, leading up, I think to this game, but like, they've kind of established themselves as, 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 as one of these new small school powers in the, in the Bay area. Um, so yeah. I don't, and, and I think, and I think you're right, Ken, and I'll pull this all, all, all back around, but I don't think they're going anywhere anytime soon. So um, St. Vincent is here to stay, and we'll see if uh, if they can bring home the hardware this weekend. Even with the seniors leaving, you think even with those seniors, kind of that senior class has kind of carried them. Yeah, Gabe all. Castanovas, Gabe Castanovas coming back, Mason Cadarelli coming back. I think um, isn't isn't Ty Nickens coming back? They have, so, I think they have, back. I think I think they have Rooks coming back. Um, I mean, uh, I know that I know that for a smaller school too, they actually do have a JV program. Um, I think they have some of those guys up right now. But I mean, to Kenan's point too, like. A lot of the seniors right now have had varsity experience the last couple of years. And I think that's one of the, you know, there are pros and cons with, you know, being a small school program, but one of the pros is you get all, your, you know, your young guys get, get a lot of varsity reps. So, um, yeah. yeah, I mean, again, I, I think that they're, that, that they're pretty well set for, uh, you know, to, to kind of sustain the success going forward. Yeah. 100%. I mean, the, I mean, the, like, like Gus just mentioned, I mean, the, their backfield is a duo of sophomores. Like, like, like that is, I mean, with the success they're having too, that is like every coach's dream, right? You, mm-hmm. Right. To, to have those guys for, for the next couple of years. Um, so yeah, man, I mean, St. Vincent is, I mean, that was a crazy game. It was just out. I mean, St. Vincent came to play, no doubt about it. You know, Jordan, you can get on Gus as much as you like. Cause, cause you earned it. I will. Yeah. <laughs> this, this, this podcast episode won't say hey, I'll wear it. it. I will wear it. I will wear it. I made the pick. I'll wear it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Just, I, I, I'm surprised. Uh, I'm surprised they didn't. Uh, they didn't clip you on Twitter like the El Cerrito guys clipped me, Gus. But, uh, but oh, uh, the week is still. The week is still young. The week is still yeah, young. Yeah, the week is the week is still young. 
<laughs> thanks, thanks, Kamani Jackson. I appreciate you. Um, well, I, I gotta say too, I gotta say too, one of the reasons that uh, that I picked Palo Alto, I gotta get Keenan back in the standings here too. So Keenan, uh, I think Keenan officially clinched the uh, the season win um, in our in our predictions. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, I think he officially clinched it last week. That's right, Jordan. Um, when year two, baby. Back That's back right. Keenan year two, we already it. get that dub. Keenan got it. Oh, so yeah, yeah. There you go. Yes. Yeah, I think I think I won it last year. But yeah, Keenan. Uh, Keenan, I think oh, yeah. had a. The Keenan had a two game lead going into the last week, and so or no, one game, one or two game lead. I think it was like it was close. No, it was really close no, no. We no, we were tied going into. Oh, we were tied. That's last. right. We were tied. Yeah, we were tied for the season, and and then I think Keenan had a had a two. Yeah, so Keenan had a two game lead. I think in the playoffs, and then I had a two game lead from the regular season, um, and so it was tied. And then that game, this again, this is what I get for picking against St. Vincent. Oh, so man. Um, Way yeah, to, congrats. Way to That's all. I know exactly. <laughs> well, so. anyways, um, so let's uh let's let's get these picks uh picks out of the way. I love how everyone's put everyone's put blank right now. So um <laughs> I guess we'll <laughs> we'll we'll just say I'm out loud here. Um so yeah, like uh total playoff records, uh Gus, you're 12 and 8, I'm 15, 5. Jordan, you're an even 500 at 10 and 10. Um let's, let's um Let's preview the state title game, shall we? St. Vincent 12 and 2 versus, I believe it's Wasco or Wasco. I think Wasco, um, who is 9 and 5. Wasco, Jordan, they won their bowl game by a b- amazing score of 7 to 6 against Cerritos in an absolute, absolute barn burner down there in Southern California. Um, but, uh, Gus, I know you tweeted out the Cal. Uh, Cal High, either the Cal High or Cal Preps prediction. Cal, Cal, Cal Preps, yeah. Cal, so Cal, Cal Preps. So yeah, go ahead. Yeah, but no, the, the Cal, yeah, Preps, yeah. Cal Preps. Cal Preps has St. Vincent. Who wants it? Do you want it? <laughs> so we'll, so we'll, we'll just say St. Vincent has a um, is is a projected winner in Cal Preps computer computer rankings projections. Uh, projected winner thirty eight to fourteen. So St. Vincent, according to Cal Preps computer model, is a twenty four point favorite heading in this weekend. So Kenan, throwing throwing it, throw it back to you there real quick. Yeah, yeah. So. Um, but uh, I mean, it's it's high school football, so so who the heck knows? I mean, Wasco coming in here at at nine and five. You know, they're a small town down outside of Bakersfield. Um, they are four and two, finished third in the South Sequoia League uh, out of the Central section uh, with a four four and two league record. Um, it's interesting because, like, and it seems like just basing it off of their of of their schedule during the regular season when they lost they lost pretty bad but then when they when they when they won they put up a lot of points so very very hard to gauge i'm pretty sure if i remember correctly the same as the guys letting me know that it's that they play a very smash mouth type of football like to run yeah. it down your throats things like that but they have come gone on an absolute tear uh the last the last five game four or five games or so uh, 28, 21, 27, 10, 42, 41 in their section title games, kind of similar to uh, Palo Alto there. And, uh, and then a seven, six win in the, in the bowl game over Cerritos. So certainly not a, certainly not a walkover. I mean, obviously if we're going, I mean, obviously Cal preps has their own thing, but, um, definitely, definitely not a walkover, uh, at, at all. I mean, this is, they're, they're in the state title game for a reason, boys. Uh, no, no no doubt about it so um you know it's it's i mean that i mean the, this is what it all comes down to though this is what i love about it. i mean same what we all know about st vincent's weapons you know we, we know what they bring to the table uh this is going to be at pasadena's uh city college uh on friday december 8th at 4 p.m so they get the very first slot of the weekend uh mm-hmm. because the state championships go friday and saturday um, so they get the very first slot. They're the first game up. Jordan, first man up. You first man look, up. Man. So uh, look, man. Look. <laughs> Jordan, look, I'll, I'll let you go first before Gus takes it over. Gus, you said the line's 24 points. Yeah. Okay, that's too low. It needs to be higher. <laughs> <laughs> Give me St. Vincent. By a lot. By a lot. They, they they here. Up. And I know I hear you. I hear you. I hear you, Kenan. Smash mouth football. Guess, guess, you know, you know what, you know what, you know what high school coaches say that every high school coach says that because they want yeah. their guys to play that kind of way. Look, man, St. Vincent has won ugly, 
They've won pretty. They know how to get it done. Give me St. Vincent big. I expect a final score 41 to 10. I'm giving you a score. Oh, we're doing score predictions. Opening like up it. the weekend with a blowout. I Come like on, it. championship weekend in Pasadena. I love it. Gus? Yeah, I mean, it's hard. It's, it's, um, I mean, again, like I said, I've learned my lesson. I'm not picking against St. Vincent this year. Um, so <laughs> let me just run through. Let me just run through some uh, some of the some of the research I did on on Wasco a bit here though. Um, so another big school, eighteen hundred kids at the high school. Um, fun fact: Wasco is uh, is the rose capital of the world. Uh, I bet you guys oh, know that one. Fifty five percent of roses of all the roses grown in growing in the U S. are actually grown in Wasco. So there you go. Um, but yeah, I mean, one thing, uh, one thing I will say. I mean, again, you know, you, you made some points about like, you know, run heavy team. They run, they run, they run a a, a double wing formation. Um, I think they have one passing touchdown this year, like all season. <laughs> they average like 250 <laughs> rushing yards a game. They have a stud sophomore Noah Lopez. He has 1,400 rushing yards, 19 touchdowns. Um, Mike Dominguez also has a thousand rushing yards. I think both those guys are at, you know average about 100 rushing yards a game. Um, but yeah, you mentioned last week's game, seven to six. So um, ugly. I mean, like you kind of said, ugly game. But I this or this this Wasco team has kind of done this all all postseason. Um, you know, you kind of mm-hmm. rattle off some of those postseason wins. They've they've been winning games like close, kind of ugly. Um, I mean, so last week uh, they were trailing Cerrito six to zero after you know in the first half, but they had a um, you know they had blocked the PAT. Uh, Wasco uh, rattled off a 10 minute 80 yard drive uh, to open the second half. And that was the only score that they had. So seven to six was the, um, uh, you know, was the final. And then we, you know, Wasco got two stops in the, in, you know, in, in the, in the fourth quarter for the win. But I mean, so Cerritos, you know, the team that they played had won seven games in a row, averaged 36 points a game coming into that game. Um, and Cerritos held them to again, six points and they had three possessions in the second half. Um, yeah. So this is a Wasco team that will hold the ball. They want to, you know, dominate time of possession. They're going to run, you know, r- keep your defense on the field. They're, gonna, they're just going to, r- you know, run it down your throat. Um, this is a, uh, I mean, again, like, like you said, high school football is kind of a crapshoot, um, especially in, you know, in these big games, you know, we saw that, you know, I think, I think um, St. Vincent was like, was like an 11 or 12 point favorite last week, according to Cal preps. And again, you know, they went by two. So, um, you know, I think I again, I I do think that St. Vincent just has way too much firepower. I think for this, you know, for for Wasco to handle. Um, I mean, yeah, they kind of want to grind it out, but I mean, St. Vincent has just such an an electric offense uh, that you know they can put up a couple scores in a few minutes. And with the team like Wasco, if they get behind, it's going to be hard for them to come back. So. I agree with both of you. I think St. Vincent is going to win this game. I do think it's going to be pretty one sided, but I will say. Wasco, if they execute their game plan, if they hold the ball, if they grind it out, if they get some stops on defense, if if they control time of possession, maybe get a few you know uh, a few turnovers, which you know has again helped them help lead them to the last couple wins they you know they've had in the playoffs. If all that happens, you know this this could very well be a close game. I mean, shoot, if St. Vincent only gets yep. three possessions, you know, in 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 a half, who knows? It could be anyone's game. Um, again, all that being said, though, you know this is. This really is just I, you know, I I think this is probably just, you know just, just going to be a coronation ceremony for St. Vincent. I mean, this is a team that has just just worked too hard to get here. Um, I will say though, I I I, I bet Trent and Trent and the coaching staff just hate us doing this. I mean, we're just like this is like um this is like uh Pat or uh, uh, uh or Nick Saban always talks about you know you know the media giving out rat poison you know where there's you know <laughs> saying that saying that Alabama is just great and all this different stuff and I feel like we're kind of doing that right now. So. Sorry, no bulletin board material this week. But I mean, again, I I just think that again, you know, looking at this matchup, St. Vincent is, is just the better team. They're especially coming off last week, where if they can have, you know, if they can handle Palo Alto's line and their athletes like that, I don't think that they should have much trouble, ha- you know, handling Wasco in this game too. So, um, yeah, St. Vincent across the board. I don't, I you know, I mean, I, you know, I think we had mentioned, you know, some of the. Uh, some of the state winners, I think, you know, in years past, and we haven't had many in Sonoma County. I mean, I think, I think Newman in 2019 was the only one that we've had ever. Um, I mean, again, I might be missing some in like the, I mean, but I don't think I am in like the eighties, nineties, whatever, but you know, we've had a couple runners up. I mean, you know, Rancho in 2019, Newman in 06 and 08, but I mean, as far as I could find in my, you know, quick little research, I think Newman's the only state winner that we've ever had. So, Mm -hmm. um, 
St. Vincent has a very good chance, I think, to join that that pretty elite company as well. So, yeah. You got you got a score prediction, Gus? Link Jordan. Uh, you know, I I, I think forty one ten is pretty close. I mean, yeah, I can see it being like forty two fourteen or something like that. Um, maybe even like thirty five fourteen. You know, I I I don't think Wasco is going to get shut out, but um. And also, I mean, again, I think I think if St. Vincent is going to put up some points, they're going to have to do it probably probably in the first half, because um, then again, I think you know Wasco is is, is just going to have a you know have a hard time keeping up. So yeah, um, I, I will say that you know if they play it close and they and again to your point, if they keep possessions away going late into the game, it gets a little yeah. tight. It's going to get a little yeah. tight, but yeah, they got to score a little early. Yeah, no, and I mean again, like the last couple couple weeks, like I mean you, you know Wasco won last week. You know they had a um, you know. I, I think there was a late fumble recovery and I think they, they, you know, they opened the playoffs in the exact same way, you know, when they beat Reedley. Um, you know, so again, it's like, this is, you know, Wasco is a team that's been hot, you know, of late, they have a very good defense, you know, they get some, you know, key plays, you know, when they need to, um, they have a style of play that, you know, could slow down St. Vincent if it, you know, if they execute it well, but again, at the end of the day, I just think, you know, think St. Vincent is just too much firepower for this team. So. Yeah. I'm, I'm with both of you boys, man. It's a St. Vincent sweep across the board. Like, like Gus said, so um, you know, <laughs> Gus, oh, Gus says he'll never pick against St. Vincent again until we, but wait till next year. He probably will. Um, uh, all right. Hey, well, last time, last time I picked against St. Vincent, I was right, which was the UK again. So, yeah. Oh, see, now he's bringing that back up. Here we go. Here we go. But, um, <laughs> anyway, so yeah, that is for the Division Six Double A State Championship again. Uh, that will be Friday, December 8th. At 4 p.m. at Pasadena City College. Um, if you're not going to make it down there, I'm pretty sure, Gus, is it NFHS that broadcasts it? Or I'm not uh, sure. I don't the... know. I know there's going to be a bunch of the higher division games, like the Open and the One and the, I, I think some of the two yeah. games are all, are going to be broadcast by Spectrum down in SoCal. But I don't know. I mean, I would be surprised if there was a state, you know, if there's a, a state title game without a broadcast going on. So, yeah. Um, I mean, you're so, writing up the previews and stuff this week, so I think we'll have that information I'll, you know, by the time you yeah, get stuff out. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll get some information uh, before then. If, if you're not making the trip down to Pasadena, I will be making the trip down to Pasadena. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll have some, we'll, hopefully we'll have some fun down there. Um, all right, let's move in, Move on. Uh, that's, that's it for football. Obviously, when you have one team left, uh, not too much to talk about uh, in terms of football sense. But while I was covering football this weekend, boys... You guys, we're on the hoop scene. Uh, we're going to do a little hoops weekend wrap up here. Um, Gus, I know you were at the Petrich uh, over at Monty. Jordan, you, you, you were watching some games at some tournaments. Uh, Jordan, let's uh, let's throw it to you kind of uh, to start things off uh, on the Napa scene. Talk to me, Napa hoops, man. Yes, sir. Well, first, before I get to the to Napa, who played in the uh, they played. What's the name of that tournament? The Danny Lewis Invitational. They played in that Invitational over the weekend. Before I get into that, um, the first game I went to, well, one of the first games I went to was uh, American Canyon um, against my hometown, Franklin, Yellow Jackets, man, hey. Stockton, California. <laughs> hey. I, I didn't even know it was that Franklin until I was like really looking up like the rosters and stuff kind of pregame. I was like, oh, this is Stockton, Franklin, man. What's up? What's up? But um, now nah, they they destroyed Franklin. They destroyed Franklin. It was, <laughs> it was, it was, it was a blowout game. It was a blowout game. Um, 69 to 20 was the final score. Um, and this wasn't really a game I think you really look at, you use as like a, like a, you know, a, r a real test for this American Canyon team. It's still really early in the season. A lot of these opponents are going to, a lot of these teams in, 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 the, in the area are playing aren't, you know, exactly going to be the team they play down the line. So it's kind of hard to really evaluate how good they are yet. But just from the, an eye test standpoint, like this, this team, I think is going to be um, a real problem in, in B-Val. I think they can shoot it with the best of them. Jacob Soriano, he had freaking 18 points, six of six from three. J Jack Turner had nine points, three of three from three. Um, they have a lot of athletes who can rebound. So they get all these second possessions and they have shooters who can just, you know, once they get that second chance rebound, they just let it fly, man. So um, I was really impressed by them this weekend. Um, but I also went and checked out, like how I mentioned before, um, Napa. So I checked out Napa actually earlier last week. Um, and then I also checked them out during this tournament. And they lost in the third place game against Santa Rosa. Um, I believe the final score was like 60 to 70. Um, and it was very close down to the wire game. Um, throughout this entire tournament, they played really, really close. Um, and I think they're they're a really young team, still kind of figuring out their identity. Um, but they have a lot of really good, highly established leadership that I think is really kind of 
setting the tone. Um, one guy who who made the all tournament team, um, Jaden Quintana, really, really crafty point guard. He's averaging like 10 points a game for them. Um, they also have Christian Williams, who's averaging like 16. He's a flamethrower. He can shoot the heck, you know, the heck out of it. Um, so I was really, really impressed, I think, with the Napa basketball scene from from what I took away this weekend. And um, it's going to be exciting to see going forward in the league play, how they kind of test themselves. But um, I, overall, I was just really impressed. You know what I mean? It's a lot, it's a lot of games going on, a lot of different types of, you know, talent that you kind of got to compare and evaluate. Um, but I was really, really impressed overall. So that's kind of my takeaways generally. Yeah. The, um, uh, you know, getting out and covering some, some basketball action this week too. Uh, so I was, I was over at the, you know, Montgomery's Peterich tournament. Um, and Montgomery actually, uh, you know, was, has been the one team that's beaten American Canyon so far this year. And they, they held them, yeah. you know, way under their scoring, their scoring, uh, average right now. I mean, they beat them 47, 36. And I mean, it, it, you know, in every game since, or, you know, other than that, um, you know, I mean, uh, uh, American Canyons put up like almost 60, you know, 60 points a game. So, um, from what I had heard, though, you know, just like doing some, you know, talking to coaches and stuff. I mean, American Canyon people do think that that that, that is going to be a very legit threat over in the VVAL. Um, But I think the VVAL, you know, trying to put together, I guess, you know, some of my early season rankings and trying to see what coaches think and whatnot. I mean, it was kind of interesting. I mean, I have, I have like a, at this point, like just just hearing from coaches and, you know, what they kind of think. I mean, I have like uh three VVAL teams in my top four of our of my of my you know the early season yeah. you know se- season rankings yeah. right now i mean so yeah. and it's and kind of at one two it's a bit of a toss-up i mean you know i it's it's kind of like montgomery justin sienna is are kind of the two teams that people think are going to be you know the top ones around here i heard that justin sienna beat montgomery in a um in a scrimmage yeah. uh you know before this year started but i also heard that uh, montgomery played like their entire roster and justin might not have you know, might, you know, might've had their starters and, you know, for, for, for most of the time. So, yeah. So um, either way, I, you know, it's kind of a Montgomery, Justin, you know, at, at one, two kind of thing. Petaluma, uh, people are very high on Petaluma right now. You know, I think they're off to a three and zero start. Um, and then American Canyon might be in there at four or five with, uh, with Cardinal Newman. Cardinal Newman's super young right now. Um, they don't have their Cloverdale transfer, Tatum Kropinski, who, when he gets eligible, he'll be one of, if not the best player in the county. Um, and then they also have Madi Kamara, who was, I believe, a first or second team or second team or, or honorable mention guy last year. Um, mm. He's kind of banged up right now from football, but he's coming back. Um, and then like Pine or Ukiah are kind of the, you know, the, the the two other teams kind of finishing out that top six, top seven. But I mean, there's a lot of parity. I mean, you know, you saw Santa Rosa play. People think Santa Rosa could be you know pretty good this year. Um, yes. Annalie's off to a bit of a rough start, um, but people are very high on them or coaches are at least. I mean, they, you know, I'm I. They had a pretty tough showing at the Petrich, um, but uh, but uh, they actually so the first game that they played, they they actually um, they played Monterey Trail, who was the, uh, the eventual winner of the Petrich. They they gave them their best game of the um, um, of the whole week. And and um, and Monterey Trail, you know, went on to beat Campo Lindo in the championship game by like 20. Uh, and I think Anley only lost them by like 15 or 16. And it was actually kind of close late. So. Um, yeah, I mean, Annalie could be good despite their rough start. And then St. Vincent, uh, I know that, you know, they're off to a good start, you know, and so they, uh, you know, they have a bunch of transfers and stuff eligible now. So they, um, I think they're going to be in line for a pretty good year over in the Redwood as well, kind of in the smaller school divisions and stuff too. But yeah, I mean, I guess my general takeaways from the Petrich, uh, um, Montgomery's good. Montgomery's very, very good this year. Um, you know, I had heard, uh, <laughs> Um, everyone, I think, but Montgomery head coach Steve Arrow think that Montgomery is 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 the number one team in the area um, at this, this point of the like year. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I mean, um, uh, big you know, big six eight guy Michael Yule Jr. Um, kind of raw, still getting his hands you know right. But I mean, just, you know, just being six eight in this area is a is a is a huge bonus. Um, six four freak athlete Isaiah Wright. I mean, you know, the three star you know football you know recruit guy is just a guy's a beast. Um, you know, he can actually shoot the ball a bit better now than I think I saw him shoot last year. And then, you know, Will Graff, I think he's a little, he's a, he's a small little hand injury, but I mean, I, you know, I know he was an all league guard coming back last year. And then, I mean, but the, but the big name, I think, oh, they also have a couple of cool, a couple of good sophomores who could get some, you know, good playing time this year. But then I think the big name is Caden DeVries. Um, I think he was uh, maybe a first or first or second team guy last year as a junior. And he is just taking this game to a whole different level this year. Um, I mean, in the, in the, in the third place game that I saw on Saturday where they, you know, uh, where Montgomery kind of cooked San Marin pretty good. Um, he had 16 points in the first quarter. He had four threes. He had 24 points in the game. 20 of those were in the first half. I mean, he just put the team on his freaking back. Um, I mean, inside, outside, deep threes, pull-ups. Like, I think he had a couple dunks on the weekend. Like, this dude is really, really good. So, 6'3", 
uh, just two way guard, you know, really good defender, floor general, make smart plays, athlete, um, all the all the things we want. So um, definitely Montgomery, uh, I, I'd say the team to beat right now in the area. Justin Siena, I think, will you know also be up there, you, you know, when it's all said and done. I know they have a lot to replace from last year, but yeah, I was very, very impressed with with, with what I saw from Montgomery this week. But um, a couple other things on the girls side, too, that I wanted to touch on. But um, uh, so there was so, you know, Maria Carrillo definitely had a big um you know, had a, had a great week, I'd say, uh, you know, they lost their the second place or the, um, their, the, the second game of the tournament that they were in, but that was a fill in game. So they ended up going off the championship game and they won that. And they had a couple of players who were back from last year, um, who had a, who coming off great seasons last year. So I think Carrillo could be pretty good. Montgomery, same thing. They won the, uh, the, the Sonoma Valley tournament, um, a couple of really, really good wins. They're three and on the year. Um, but of course, again, you know, I mean, I, it's, <laughs> this is just kind of how it always is around here is all these teams are just kind of second tier uh, right now to Newman. Um, you know, Newman, I think was entering this year, top 15 in the state. Um, you know, this, this might be one of, you know, one of their best teams in recent years. Uh, and of course, you know, you know, we're still waiting on, um, you know, the Brazilian player, uh, you know, Tysa Curaz to, to, to become eligible. Um, if, and when she does, they're going to be like a top five team in the state. Um, but yeah, it was an interesting, it's been an, an, an interesting start to the year for them right now. I mean, they're two and two, they lost their first game of the year, I believe to St. Mary's Stockton, I think it was, who yeah. I think is like top yeah. five or top 10 in the state. Yeah, nothing they're, they're wrong good. with that. Yeah. Nothing wrong yeah. with that loss. And then, um, this past week at the, at, at Newman's Cardinal Newman classic, um, they got two, uh, you, you know, pretty elite field, you know, a bunch of teams, you know, you know, bubble teams for the top 50 in the state. Um, you know, kind of rolled through them. They 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 held Stanford signee um, Harper Peterson uh, in the second place game scoreless, which is a huge accomplishment. Um, and then it was an interesting final game. They actually lost to Sacred Heart Cathedral, uh, who I believe was, which is kind of an upset, uh, I'd say, in the, mm -hmm. you know, as far as the state rankings go. I mean, I think uh, Sacred Heart was like top, was like ranked 30, Newman like 14. Um, and Sacred Heart was actually up, I think they were up like eight in the final, like 30 seconds. And then Newman had some furious last second run and then just ran out of time at the end. But yeah, two and two start for Newman. Um, I mean, again, they're, you know, once we get to league play, they're just going to, you know, do what they do and roll over all, all the local teams. But, um, you know, I mean, again, I think there is still some very, very good, you know, girls basketball talent. I think, you know, you know, Annalee has some good players back. Um, there are going to be a lot of very competitive games in the NBL this year. Um, and then same thing with Healdsburg too. I mean, shout out my Greyhounds, uh, girls, girls hoops, uh, uh, um, are definitely, um, definitely on the up and up right now. I'd say over at Healdsburg. Defending some, champions, uh, Gus. That's true. That's true. <laughs> um, they're looking good again this year. I, I, I think their one loss came against San Marin over in the Piner, uh, the Gold Rush Classic. So nothing wrong with that. Piner, you know, San Marin is a very good program. So, um, yeah, I mean, again, you know, this is just kind of be all, all very brief um, kind of service level info and stuff. And we'll have a lot more hoop stuff kind of coming up here in the next couple of weeks. But, um, yeah. yeah, some good tournaments I, coming up. Oh, yeah, go, go ahead, Jordan. I just wanted to touch on, on the women's side of Napa a little bit as well. Yeah, um, yeah go for American it. Canyon girls are also very good. Um, yeah, they're three and two. Um, they, they, they've had a couple like uh, they, they probably should have won those kind of game, uh, kind of losses. But I mean, the way they're playing, it, they playing with a ton of confidence. Um, and then also. Yeah, Casa is undefeated. Like they're really good. Yep. Oh yeah, um, Casa too. Thank you. Yeah. And then yeah, so Vintage and Napa are struggling. They they're both winless on the year so far, but um they have a lot. There's a lot of tournament play upcoming, so there's gonna be a lot, a lot of opportunities I think for these teams to kind of grow. Um, uh, in particular Napa, they're gonna be playing in the Holiday Switch Classic um on Wednesday. I think that's at I believe it's at Elsie Allen High School. So um, there, hey, opportunity, more games. I I think. That, that's the advantage again if you look at a game or teams like american canyon boys and girls not only are they yes you know you watch them play they play the right way um and they have better records than most people but they've also played more games than more people and i yeah. think that is actually a huge factor especially with, with with something like this getting those reps getting those opportunities to test out different lineups test out different things um and just have opportunities for your team to grow um so i'm looking forward to these, these upcoming tournaments to see kind of what um these other these other teams that maybe are at the, at the lower end of the of the standings can maybe you know kind of kind of come back and bolster back their season for sure yeah and and um and like and like uh you know like we've kind of touched on a bit here too but it's 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 a basketball tournament season right now i mean you know per, you know this december is it, every weekend there's tournaments going on so you know napa yeah. had one last weekend you know we had um uh you know newman girls had one last weekend uh uh, coming up this week, though, we have uh, uh, Newman boys are doing the Rose City. Um, that's going Thursday to uh, to Saturday. A couple of good local teams that Petaluma, Annalee. 
Um, and then a uh, rebit, which I believe is the, was the longest running basketball tournament, I think in Sonoma County. It's like the 60 something year or something like that. Um, nice. boys and girls. Yeah. Boys and girls doing that. Um, I think that goes Wednesday to Saturday and then, um, St. Vincent as well, uh, has, is doing the, uh, the first annual Gary Von Raisfeld Memorial, um, in honor of, uh, you know, the, um, you know, uh, you know, Gary was a, uh, integral member of that athletic department for, what 30 years 40 years longer than that um i mean yeah this is and then he passed away suddenly i I know almost a year ago actually now so um yeah just a cool thing to do in his honor um and again i mean kind of full circle here too but it's like you know they're they're you know same instant football kind of doing this all um you know with uh, with gary kind of watching down on them too so um yeah uh definitely kind of you know cool thing for that program to do but yeah, anyway, um, boys, I think that's about all we got for this week. Kenan, anything else you wanted to add? I mean, you're going down, you're flying down Thursday down to Pasadena. Um, have all the traveling. sights and sounds. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Flying them down. Um, yeah, we're going to you know, have all the sights and scenes. Kenan will, uh, you know, again, be on the scene, you know, follow him all week for, um, you know, he'll. I think, I think you're going out to practice tonight for some, you know, preview coverage, some social media yeah. stuff I heard maybe. Um, and then, uh, and then, yeah, all weekend, um, Kenan's, Kenan's your guy, so... Uh, I'm actually I'm 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 dipping into town, so I will not be around this weekend. So Kenan will be your will, you know will be your guy to follow uh, uh, for all the St. Vincent State title game stuff. So um, should be really fun to watch. But Kenan, what are you? Uh, anything else you wanted to add about this week coming up? But I mean, this is you know again we haven't had many teams ever you know make it this far you know into a playoff season. So really cool to yeah, kind no, of follow on track. Yeah, no, this is this is I mean this is so exciting. Um, I mean not only for the for the town of for for St. Vincent itself but the town of Petaluma as well um Gus I know you live in Petaluma like me so uh I mean th- th- this is huge for the town and 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 I think you know I, I think if it was any of the three Petaluma schools Petaluma Casa or St. Vincent I think I think this town really comes together um for for mm-hmm. for some like this um is so but I I, I did want to I did want to mention about about hoops real quick you know I would love to see Petaluma and Montgomery play again, considering that last year they put put on a classic in the playoffs, um, which Montgomery ended up winning. Uh, but that's two of your top three teams, right? Right there, Gus. So that's yeah. I don't. Yeah, one. yeah. I don't think they're playing. They're playing this year, unfortunately, because um, I don't think Montgomery's not going to be in the Callan tournament at Pasa in a couple weeks, and then I don't. Yeah, I mean, I don't. I don't think they're going to play each other this year, unfortunately, but. Um, I mean, yeah, Petaluma will be a very fun team to watch this year. They have three guards who are back who are all league guys last year. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, I think should be among the best guards in the area this year. So, um, yeah, should oh, be fun. But, uh, yeah, good. Also, an- another team, I don't know if you mentioned them real quick, but Ukiah, too, seems like they've just re- reloaded. I, n- I know they lost uh, all the MVP of the league last year, Marcus Fink, but Amari yeah. phillips Sporterman is just an absolute athlete, and Tony Zacharias is back, so – that I think they should e- easily be favored to win that NBL Redwood for a second straight year. Yeah, I mean, and, and they and they rolled through through a tournament this weekend. They're now five and one on the year, and that one loss was was against Newman, and that was a game that Newman actually came back and won late. I think I think uh, I think Ukiah was up like th- two or three or something in the final minute, and then uh, and then and then Newman came back and won it late. But um, yeah, I mean, Ukiah, like you said, you know, Omari is is off to a fantastic start. Jackson Page, you know, went, went, you know. Went, one of their six four, um, you know, big wide receiver guys. He's like, you know, he's back. He's a he's a big piece for them. Um, and then yeah, I mean, you know, you mentioned kind of big names there too. But um, yeah, I mean, again, um, lots of fun hoop stuff coming up this year. Uh, you know, I mean, I think last year we were so spoiled with how with how good you know the MBL Oak was, and um, I mean, every game was just was just just a dogfight, and we had some teams going to even playoffs and stuff. And I don't know if we're going to have kind of that echelon, uh, you know, that kind of top echelon again, but I do think there's going to be a lot of, a, a lot of parody throughout the league. I mean, a couple of years ago, I think, you know, you know, Arrow at Montgomery had said, he's like, I don't think anyone is going to get through league unscathed. And I think that's probably about as true as you can get this year. I mean, again, I think Montgomery is yeah. definitely the favorite, but you know, night in, night out, I think it's going to be a, be a battle, you know, for, you know, for all those spots in the Oak this year. So. What wins are Newman four times, four times in a row, just like last year? <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, it's not going to be. I, uh, I don't think so. I don't. Think no, so. they're not. It's not going to be as 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 uh, as as heavyweight battles. I think this year. Also, I learned too that the Anderson brothers are not playing basketball this year. So that's so that's certainly a uh, oh, wow. certainly a loss for Windsor. Yeah, I mean, focusing on football and stuff. I or you know, I understand for Hayden. So. Um, but yeah, I mean, a couple. You know, I mean, you know, Joseph Campbell's back. Um, you know, new head coach. The uh, 
who's the other one? Uh, Colin Kraft mm-hmm. back. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, they, they have a, so anyway, so, you know, um, I think Windsor, you know, should be pretty good, but, um, you know, again, I, you know, them, right. Yeah. They, they play the yeah, right yeah, way. That's what you're saying. For yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, it's, I mean, again, I think, I think, you know, like I said last year, so much, you know, we, we were pretty top heavy. A lot of teams were up. And then I think a lot of guys have graduated this year. So I, you know, I, I still think night in, night out, we're going to have some, re- you know, really, really good games too, though. Um, so we'll see. I mean, again, December is a fun month. Um, you know, just hoop season is getting up and rolling. We still have football season, which is kind of crazy. So um, soccer yeah, we'll wrestling right there. around the corner too. All um, starting up. Yep. Soccer has arrived. arrived. Uh, I will be at some soccer fields, y'all. I will be at some soccer fields. Y'all will catch me <laughs> at some soccer fields very soon. Um, Most definitely. Better. You better. You better. Um, so yeah, uh, those are just one of the quick things I want to add. But I think that uh, that wraps it up for this episode. Um, unless you you guys have any anything else you want to get off your chest, but um, other than that, um, again, St. Vincent State title game Friday Friday afternoon 4 p.m. Uh, Pasadena City College. Uh, again, I'll be down there. Gus will be off off doing doing his thing for for the weekend jordan jordan will be around so make sure you follow jordan as well um for for all the napa happenings um other than that we appreciate you guys for for watching listening however you consume this content and uh we'll see you guys next week